immediately following the rapture. The Lord took countless of his followers to heaven in an instant. It's assumed from scriptures that this will be the worst catastrophe in global history. Fear and despair have gripped the hearts of all those who were left behind. There will be a dramatic increase in lawlessness and global unrest. Many people will perish from the calamities that are bound to occur. Governments will scramble to rebuild their nations and to regain a sense of order that will never be the same. It will be a day of destruction. They will say, peace and safety. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as pain comes upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. The Apostle John's visions in the book of Revelation tells us about the things that must come about during the seven year tribulation period following the rapture. All of these prophecies in the Bible will be fulfilled before the glorious appearing of Christ's thousand year reign on earth. I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking to me said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was standing in heaven and someone was sitting on the throne and he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and sardius in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were 24 thrones and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. Out from the throne came flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the center around the throne, four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, the third creature had a face like a man, and the fourth creature was flying like an eagle. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night they did not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so to be able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw when the lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked, and behold, a white horse. And the one who sat upon it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. He went out conquering and to conquer. The 
The White Horse Rider's Crown represents the new Antichrist kingdom that will be established at the end of days. The white color of the horse indicates that initially this will be a time that seems that goodness is prevailing. The bow he carries symbolizes his world conquest. The Antichrist will conquer the whole world during a short time of peace. He will act quickly because just like his father the devil, he knows that his time to rule is short. The Antichrist will fill the void that was left in the world after the rapture. He will give unbelievers hope while he establishes a new world government and religion with the help of his false prophet. The world will be in such turmoil and the Antichrist will establish his rule peacefully. He will deceive many by his great wicked powers, showing signs and wonders, and cause many people to falter. The Apostle Paul's prophecy in the book of 2 Thessalonians warned us about the Antichrist's deception. See that no one is to deceive you in any way, for it will not come unless the abandonment comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? And you know what restrains him now, so that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is removed. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eliminate with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is, the one who is coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders. And with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not accept the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they may all may be judged who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. The rider of the white horse is the first of four horsemen of the apocalypse, as they are called. He will conquer until the appointed time of the other three horsemen. His peaceful conquest will eventually give way to violent warfare, famine, followed by death and widespread destruction. God will not remove his spirit during the tribulation and will still call his children unto himself. Many people will come to repentance in those days and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. The Holy Spirit will continue to do his saving work of convicting people of their sins and leading them to faith in Christ many people will be saved, the tribulation saints. God, however, has loosened the restraints that were protecting the world from the wicked one, the son of destruction, the Antichrist. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly 
they are ferocious wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan himself disguises as an angel of light. So it is no surprise that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their actions. The Lord will not allow his tribulation saints to be deceived or overcome by the Antichrist. Those that put their faith in him alone. Even during the time of peace, they will recognize the Antichrist by his actions. They will know him by his fruits. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming, and now is already in the world. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Behold, the wicked bend the bow. They make ready the arrow upon the string to shoot in darkness at the upright at heart. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than yours. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater so will my word go forth from my mouth it will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And be sure to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss part two of this series, Who is the Antichrist? We will continue to make our way through the tribulation period. I really appreciate it if you have stuck this long into the video. I'll see you next time, friends, and to God be the glory.